Hamilton's average Chinese Grand Prix has become the norm for Mercedes, but it seems like the blows just keep coming one after the other, with the seven-time world champion reaching yet another low with the team that helped him win six titles in a row. However, not all is his fault, as Mercedes, of course, have problems. And Hamilton can't do much on his own when he has a machine like the W15. How can Mercedes salvage this season? And will there be at least one summary for the Brackley-based squad? The 2024 season has been a frustrating season so far for Mercedes, who are yet to score a podium with a W15 car, which appears to be compromised by correlation issues with the team's data not then translating onto the track. In China, the team came with almost zero expectations and the podium spot Hamilton got in the sprint on Saturday, which is by far the best result for Mercedes this year, did no more than paper over the cracks that plague the team since these current regulations started in 2022. Hamilton proved how strong the race pace of the team's W15 is when he finished second in the Shanghai Sprint, beaten only by Max Verstappen's Red Bull. It was a performance that confirmed suspicions that the Mercedes is better against the opposition on long runs, but is struggling to extract as good a performance on single lap form, which often leaves it far down the order. George began the Grand Prix in eighth place on the medium tyres and quickly gained two positions by passing the two Ferrari drivers, Charles Leclerc and Carlos Sainz at the start. He then advanced to sixth place and pursued Oscar Piastri's McLaren. However, starting from lap 10, his tyre performance gradually declined, forcing him to yield to Leclerc. Struggling with his tyres, he made his first pit stop on lap 12, switching to a fresh set of mediums. After a challenging qualifying session, Lewis started from 18th on the grid and, in agreement with the team, chose to begin the race on the soft tyres. Unfortunately, he was squeezed at the start, losing a position temporarily. However, in the early stages, he made his way through the field, overtaking local hero Joe Ganyu and Kevin Magnussen. However, he then found himself trapped in traffic and opted for an early pit stop, switching from soft to medium tyres on lap 10. Lewis completed his second stop on lap 22, prompted by the retirement of Valtteri Bottas, causing a virtual safety car. He changed from the medium compound to the hard compound, and shortly after the stop, the safety car was deployed, which George also used for his second stop, opting for the hard compound. Following several incidents in the field, shortly before the restart, the safety car remained on the track. When the race resumed on lap 33, Lewis overtook Ocon and climbed into the points in 10th place. A few laps later, Later, Lewis also passed Nico Hulkenberg in the Haas and chased Piastri, whose McLaren likely sustained some damage in the chaos on the first safety car restart. In the closing stages of the race, both drivers managed their tyres to fend off Alonso, who charged through the field from behind on fresh medium tyres after another pit stop. Lewis had no chance against the charging Spaniard, but George was able to stay ahead of him. In the end, both George and Lewis saw the chequered flag after 56 laps in 6th and 9th place respectively. It was not a good race in an otherwise all right weekend, at least for Hamilton, who saw how the podium looks for the first time in 2024 and provided at least some consolation to the Mercedes fans, who at this point can't wait for 2026 and the new regulations era. To make matters worse, Hamilton complained on team radio during the race, saying that his car had so much understeer during the first half of the race that he thought something was broken. I thought maybe at the beginning I tapped someone because I have never had so much understeer in my life. So I was turning in at slow speed and waiting, 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 Hamilton explained. So I thought I had damaged something like some of the others because there was debris going everywhere at one point, but it was just the setup that I chose. With better decisions on setup, maybe we would be around where George Russell, who finished sixth, is but we just have to keep fighting. Mercedes is not habitually a team that cannot understand new rules and adapt to new situations, but as a third year of the ground effect era has started with yet another set of problems and limitations, Wolf has now admitted we're in a rebuild phase. You need to acknowledge that now. 
It's a disappointing performance level, albeit one with which the majority of teams would still aspire to be in, given Mercedes finished third in the championship in 2022. That was second behind Red Bull last year and now, of course, has a 2024 car that infrequently hits top spot or comes very close to it through a weekend before typically fading when it needs that performance the most and by its own standards Mercedes start to 2024 has been particularly bad. Mercedes barely holds a distant fourth in the Constructors' Championship, only 12 points ahead of its customer team, Aston Martin. Massive 44 behind McLaren and you have to go back to 2011 to find a season with a lesser Mercedes points total after five races. Even with a big car overhaul, it was never likely that Mercedes would pull such a rabbit from the hat in one winter that it would leap into Red Bull territory. But to have slipped backwards in competitiveness is a real disappointment. It's not just that Max Verstappen and Red Bull are in a league of their own, it's that Mercedes has a fight on its hands to even be the best of the rest. Toto Wolff isn't outright dismissing the 2024 and 2025 seasons or solely concentrating on the next rule overhaul in 2026. However, he is coming to terms with the current situation. The objective remains to compete for victories and ultimately a championship. What evidence is there that Mercedes will be in a position to challenge Red Bull for these honours in 2025? We find ourselves in a bit of a no man's land because Max and Red Bull are significantly ahead and we're in this group where it's not satisfying for any team fighting for P2, P3, P4. But this is the reality we're facing at the moment and we're trying to make the best out of this new reality. Our aim is to beat our direct competitors while acknowledging that somebody is simply doing a better job and setting a benchmark that we eventually need to match again. The big reset in 2026 certainly provides the most realistic opportunity for any other team to challenge Red Bull. We have one and three quarter seasons before that and I don't want to endure much more suffering in the next 18 months. I just hope for some highlights and a trajectory that is on the rise. If that materializes, then the steps forward will have come after at least one or two backwards in the short term. Mercedes' close 2023 rival Ferrari has pulled a long way clear. McLaren's continued its strong form from last season and looks to have an edge. Even Aston Martin is doing well enough on Saturdays to get a track position advantage that more often than not it can hold on Sundays. It does make you wonder though how good their chassis actually was in their dominating period from 2024 to 2021. One, they had such an engine advantage that possibly they got away with their chassis and aero package and overall they had the fastest car. But how much top speed could they exchange for downforce? In the past era, on a track where engine power was of lesser importance, Red Bull could compete with Mercedes. And during this season, Red Bull doesn't seem to have a clear PU advantage just looking at their advantages over certain tracks because the RB20 is much more aerodynamically advanced which given the nature of these regulations makes sense. The Brackley side are in a tough spot and are facing difficult times ahead because it does set a pretty good example on how not to approach new regulations and just because Mercedes were dominant seven years prior to them it's possible they went into 2022 thinking they got it right and that the changes were not going to be so huge so they could continue on with the same car which was of course proven last year when they went with the zero pod concept which was a huge mistake from the get-go for a team of their stature this is just pure embarrassment and it's up to only them to try to fix it do you think mercedes can bounce back soon let us know your thoughts in the comments below we'll see you very soon in the next video